Garing. Hello, Gene. Welcome, everybody. D Worm. How you doing there, Tracy? Hey, Crystal. Catherine. Gary Spikes. Welcome, everybody, as they come tracing through. We'll get Tracy to unmute his mic there. He's muted. FDL Paranormal. There you go. No, still no audio. Hey, Joe, welcome. Well, Tracy is working on his uh, settings there. Hello, Denise, welcome. We're going to actually talk about Grizzly's experiences tonight. So, yes. So, uh, yeah, don't forget to... Uh, Hit the like, follow me button, subscribe if you haven't, ladies and gentlemen. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, when you hit the like button, it actually helps out our channel. It helps out the algorithm in YouTube and, on, and also on Facebook. Hey, Crystal. And uh, welcome, everybody, to the show. We'll let Tracy uh, filter back in here. Everything was working fine in the green, in the green room, but he just whoop, and just disappeared. So... We'll see where he went off to and see if we can track him back down, ladies and gentlemen, get him back into the studio. Uh, hopefully everything's okay. Uh, no storms in my area. But uh, so I am going to a graveyard uh, probably Monday or Tuesday and going to go live with my daughter. And uh, we're going to do a show live, yes, in a graveyard. So it's going to be interesting and uh see what we can get and uh and film and do some evps and uh we're gonna do uh some techniques and take some equipment so it's gonna be interesting and uh see how that goes uh we'll be in louisville louisville kentucky uh probably monday or tuesday i don't know what today is supposed to be some rain so uh we're gonna check that out see what day it's gonna rain but uh so we're gonna advertise that be live walking around the cemetery so hopefully uh if we don't see something maybe you all would catch something uh so we'll have extra cameras going as well here comes tracy now all right tracy let's see here as he filters himself back in ladies and gentlemen so hey brian Welcome, Brian. All right, Tracy, are you there? Yeah, uh, I think so. <laughs> yeah, okay, now you're there. So I was telling everybody we're gonna I'm gonna do a live show in a graveyard next week. So Yeah, yeah, I doing? heard about that earlier. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool. Where are you where are you doing it at? And uh Shively, uh the, and one of the cemeteries in Shively and Louisville. Oh man, so, that'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. So it's gonna be interesting. So uh, my daughter will probably try to do a grave whisper technique on her grandparents or great grandparents grave uh see how that goes so i've got partially the vehicle loaded already uh so i'll probably leave out saturday morning so and it's not a far drive you know probably 30 minute drive yeah. where i'm going but she's real excited so we're going to take out some trail cams and place them around the cemetery and some other cameras we'll have cam night cameras and some night visions and some other tech uh, technology we're going to take with, but of course, cat balls and the ghost box yeah. and spirit box, whatnot. And hey, well, Dave, welcome to the show. That'll be a blast. That'll, be, that'll so, be fun for you guys. Quality time, right? Yeah, well, we're going to be live. So we're going to broadcast live. We'll have our mics and the table and everything, your computers, because I got oh, equipment right. we can go live. So yeah. uh, 
hopefully, uh, whatever uh, we don't see, maybe somebody in the audience will catch. So, or it may be just a dud and maybe no activity. So, who knows? Hey, Roger, welcome to the show. Yeah, that'd be smart. Uh, so, what's been going on with you? Well, unfortunately, for those that tuned in to see Brittany Isley, she uh, she wasn't feeling well tonight, so she ended up canceling. Uh, we're going to reschedule with her, but that'll be uh, later on, probably towards the end of November, is what, what she was saying. Um, we have every, we have actually have some pretty good bookings through October 11th, I believe, and then uh, in November we got some good stuff coming too. Uh, next week is April Busset, uh, so that'll be a be a good show with, for everyone too. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's kind of I, I think Eric is probably saying all because of the. Uh, Brittany canceling, but it is, it is what it is. People don't feel good and can't blame them. So just uh, remember, Catherine, uh, if you do find my location, remember I'm retired law enforcement. So hint, hint, I do pack heaters. So do not play with me while I'm out in the field. So just remember where's that, that cat ball at? I saw earlier on your other show. It was going uh, no, like no, crazy. Uh, yeah, I put it down. Uh, I got, I got too nervous, uh, with all that activity. So, uh, yeah, it was going a, crazy. A lot of, a lot of people, yeah. Not only, not only that, so was the the REM pod. REM pod, yeah. Hear, I heard it going yeah. on. Yeah. Did you hear what I called it? I made a new word: REM balls. REM balls. <laughs> REM pod. That's what I called it. I was so nervous. Yeah. I called the I called the REM pod or REM balls. I was trying <laughs> to say the REM pod and the balls at the same time. They're both mm. going off at the same time, <laughs> and everybody started laughing. I got so nervous. So uh, a lot of people are like, you know, hey, Rita, Rita, lovely May, Sergeant, I love uh, Beatles. Every time Rita comes on the show, I think about the Beatles. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but so a couple of people are like, you know, since she ain't coming on, what Grizzly wants to talk about your experiences. Yeah. Since nobody's really heard about you. And I was like, well, I usually don't like talk about me. Right. I always like to hear about everybody else's. So I was like, OK, that's, that's fine. So I went out there and changed it. So. You know, I'll I'll start off about where a lot of people know about my experience when my grandfather passed. Hey, Barb, which we're going to go up to Barb's experience here shortly, which is on the last show. Uh, if y'all missed it, you need to go back and watch it. Yeah, it was some far out stuff uh, with Barb and 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 Angus and everything. So, um, but anyways, my grandfather passed away when when I was around 14, 13, 14 years old, and he was really upset because he was never was going to be able to see me play the trumpet when I was growing up and that bothered him. And, uh, so we had a place down at, at the lake and, uh, I never forget. I went to get me something to drink and we had this big, big deck on the porch, uh, outside on the porch, a covered deck and, and to put in perspective how big this porch is, we're talking maybe 12 to 14 foot wide, probably 55 foot long. And it's enclosed, right? Screened in. Yeah. So big enclosure porch, right? And uh, on the porch, if you remember, back then you had those old aluminum doors. Remember those? And yep. and on the deck, uh, there was two decks. There's one when you came out of, of the place and the other one was the extension when you walked up to the porch onto the deck. So there's two decks. So uh, over time, one would sag and the other one, you know, was not level. So when you open up the, the main door to get onto the deck, you would have to drag that door and you can hear it drag. And we had bells on. It. So, you know, anytime somebody came on, onto the deck while you was inside, even with the air conditioners running at that time, we didn't have central air. We had window units, even with the window units and the TV running with the rabbit ears with tinfoil, right? You can mm. hear somebody come onto the porch and plus you can see them coming on because they had to go by the main window. You see the shadow. So uh, in the living room, there was a pull out couch and, uh, and the pull out couch turned into a bed. So I slept there. And my grandmother slept on the other couch. And we, I don't know why we never used the bedrooms, right? We always slept in the living rooms. Don't ask me why, down at the lake. So uh, I got up to get me something to drink. And when I got up, uh, we had curtains on the door next to the kitchen table going out. And as I looked out there, there, 
you know how the moon shines through the trees, right? Yep. And I looked, and I was like, there's somebody out there. And I was like, there's, there, there can't be. Now, you know, being in, in law enforcement family and growing up out in the country, you never had enough heaters, right? I mean, especially down the lake, I always packed and carried. And, uh, and I was like, uh, there's no way somebody got on there because, hey, we locked the door on, on the deck. And plus, I was right there. So I would hear somebody try to grab the door and the bells would go off or the door would rattle and, and it would make noise. And I look and I open up the curtains and I peek through and I look and somebody took a puff of a cigarette inside the face lit up and it was my grandfather. And I'm like, I was like, uh uh-uh, no. So I'm hollering at my grandmother, like, grandma, grandma, get get." Now, why is it, ladies and gentlemen, that when you try to wake somebody up, they don't get up? It's just like in the damn movies. They don't, there's like, (laughs) they don't move. And I'm screaming, get up, get up. Your grandpa's on the porch right now. So I go over there and I shake the hell out of her. And she's like, what, what? I'm like, grandpa's on the porch. He's smoking a cigarette. She's like, what? I'm like, yeah, come out of here. I'm like, yeah, ain't gonna be. Yeah. So she goes out there and we look and she goes, there ain't nobody out here. She says, are you smoking? I'm like, I ain't smoking. She's like, what's her cigarette smoke for? And there was cigarette smoke trapped underneath the overhangs. So we had an aluminum roof uh, made out, you know, with aluminum roofs, you know, with the oh, little yeah. ridges on them yep. where the rain would hit and rain would run off and smoke was trapped. Now that was freaky. So uh, I would not go back to sleep the rest of that night. I stayed up all night on that one. So ever since he passed, uh, my grandmother would have stuff that would go on at her house and down at the lake. Uh, lights would come off and on uh, on their own. And she was like, damn it, buddy, quit it. You know, and uh, the lights would come on and off. Crucifixes would fly off the wall. He was a prankster. He just loved to play jokes and pranks on people. Yeah, and uh, when he passed, I slept in his front bedroom, and uh, I never forget it. And I was married at the time; I was in my early twenties, and uh, I was taking a nap because I worked late. And uh, man, I got slapped just like that across my face. Man, I come flying out of that bed. I didn't know what the hell hit me. Yeah, and I'm running down the hallway, and and my wife and my grandmother was at the kitchen table just laughing their buns off, and I'm I'm furious, and I'm like, what in the hell? Why do y'all? I'm like, and I'm I'm going off on them, you know, and they're like, what 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 is your problem? And I'm like, why would in the hell would you do that to somebody while they're sleeping? And they're like looking at me like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, why would you slap me like that? I'm like, that that hurt. You're like, what are you talking about? I was like, why would you slap me? You're like, nobody, we, we're, we're just sitting at the table. We don't know what you're talking about. And uh, my wife at the time was like, oh, my God, look at his face. I had a handprint Man. on my face. And uh, I went in the bathroom and looked at the mirror, and there was a handprint. And, then, I mean, it slapped the fire out of me. So I was like, what in the world? And I was like, oh, no. And we went round and round for like 20 minutes over this. And, uh, and they swore up and down. It wasn't them. And I, I swore for like six months it was one of them. I swore it was her. Yeah. I really did. You know. So I kind of blew that off, tossed it up. It was her playing a joke on me. So things happen. And uh, when we first got our first house, I was probably, I don't know, 22 years old when I first bought my first house. And uh, I would always be downstairs, and I would hear my name being called, and that would scare the hell out of me. And it would be real faint, and it would sound like coming from upstairs, and I always I would hear footsteps. I lived in an old uh, Cape Cod house. And if you don't know what a Cape Cod house looks like, uh, Google it. It's a real nice-looking house, and it reminds you of a house up north. That's why I call mm-hmm. it a Cape Cod house. And it was made out of uh, stone. Uh, Bedford stone, uh, not limestone, but stone, right? Beautiful stone. Mm-hmm. And uh, and when when I'm home by myself, uh, because she worked late at night, you can actually hear footsteps walk up and down. And I always thought it was, you know, it was the old house, you know, uh, just you know the house selling. I really didn't put two and two together. 
And I noticed upstairs things would be moved. And uh, at the time, I had a reloading bench. And that tells you at the time what I was doing. When I say reloading, I used to reload my yeah. own ammunition. Yep. So in certain things, I would have in certain areas, right? And when I do reloading, there is a format. It was like da 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 when you do something. And you have to do it in a particular order to, to make a final product. And during this process, um, if I would stop, you know, I know I come right back in and pick up and that that and finish. Well, there will be something skewered or something uh, out of out of the process step. So I thought it was me just trying to straighten up or, or scoot things out of the way, and I just kept you know moving, you know, blaming myself for everything. And this went on for quite a while. And then it was noticed that uh, I couldn't, hello, YouTube user, how you doing? Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't find my keys, stuff start disappearing, uh, small things. And I, I was like, okay, I'm working too many hours. You know, you set them down. And I'm the type, Tracy, I, I come home, here's my keys, my wallet yep. stays here. I know exactly where to go. Same and uh, if if I'm out of that routine, it's it's like a monkey in a wrench, right? It, it screws everything up. So, hey, Sean, welcome to the show. So all this stuff happens. And uh, my mom would start telling me that, uh, you know, things were happening at her house. And uh, she couldn't believe it either. So uh, my grandmother got real sick and... Uh, it was real sad. She got ended up getting throat cancer. So I ended up moving in with her, helped take care of her. And if you never had anybody that had a trach, uh, that's very hard and yeah. uh, a lot of work uh, to maintain. So I helped her and she ended up passing away. And uh, she was down at the lake, my mom and dad. And uh, she said she was sleeping on the same couch, right? The pull out couch, because it's real nice, very comfy, mattress and everything. Yeah. And uh, the light came on in the middle of the night and uh, she went and pulled the cord and the light wouldn't go on. And she was like, well, that's strange. So she goes over and goes to unplug the light. The light's not plugged in. It's crazy. She hmm. pulls the cord and looks and pulls the cord. At, you know, those hanging lights, those old hanging yep. lights. Yes, sir. And the cord is going to the light and she's like, what? And she's like, Mom, and the light turns off, and she says, Mom. So she's telling me all this stuff, right? Yeah. So I'm just like, wow. I was like, you know, that's that's crazy. So she's telling me all this stuff, right? And I'm like, okay. Well, yeah. lo and behold, you know, stuff starts happening with me down at the lake. And so I start, you know, putting two and two together. And it's weird because everybody on my mom's side of the family has always come back. So, you know, I'm old house, you know, voices, stuff being moved and whatnot. And uh, even in Lexington, uh, you know, things were happening. Uh, things, pictures on the wall will be crooked and moved. And a lot of that stuff, I, I blew it off as, you know, I bumped into it in the wall. Because, you know, with my back problems, when I got hurt on the, on the department, uh, you know, maybe me bouncing off the walls or holding the walls, trying to balance myself. I didn't think nothing of it. And one of my uh, psychics were like, are you keep straightening up pictures on the walls? And I'm like, yeah, why? Why do you ask that? And she goes, well, because that's your grandfather. And I'm like, what? She goes, yeah. And she goes, you got tired of doing it, didn't you? And I'm like, yeah, I did. I just left him alone. She goes, yeah, I guess, uh, he ended up knocking them off. A uh, few of them off the wall, and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, that's right, you know. <laughs> I was like, that's actually true, and I didn't put them up, so I'm getting ready to move because she, because she told me when I was going to move and stuff, and it was weird. And I'm trying to find a picture as am I talking, and uh, my grandfather allegedly has been with me for years, especially uh, being on the police department, uh, because uh, we were out working one night. And uh, I was in, if you know what a slick top is, it's an unmarked police car. And uh, and I pulled up to one of my cruisers, uh, officers uh, was sitting there. And uh, 
and I was talking to an officer and it was leaning against my car and an officer was in his car. You know how you pull up side by side. Yeah. Man. And we were talking and uh, we we're just having a good time and they were filling me in, you know, hey, Captain, this is what's going on tonight. This is what we're doing and everything else. And just give me like a brief little summary of what, you know, what's what the calls were going on. And I'm looking at the CAD system and and that's the computers and looking yeah. at the reports and so forth, see what was going on. And uh, next thing I know, uh, one of the officers just takes off running. And I'm like, whoa, I'm like, I mean, I didn't know what was going on. I don't know if I was getting ready to get shot. We was getting ready to get ambushed because this is like one thirty, two o'clock in the morning. Right. Yeah. And uh, and he he screams. He says a, a nasty word and he just takes off running. Well, the guy next to me freaks out. Well, of course, I freak out, you know, and here I'm sitting in the car trying to figure out what's going on. So I'm looking all around. I'm still trying to find the picture. So uh, I, I pull up, jump out of the car real fast. Well, my other buddy, he gets out of the car and we're trying to find, I won't mention his name for embarrassment. Hey, Russ, welcome to the show. Uh, but uh and I hollered his name. I'm like, hey, come here. You know, I'm like, what's going on? And then and this guy's like totally out of breath. And he was like, man, he said, I'm sitting there talking to you. And I stand up and I look over the top of your car. And this guy is just standing there. And I'm like, what do you mean a guy's just standing there? He's like, yeah. He's like, a guy is just standing there. And, uh, and I'm like, well, what do you look like? Cause I didn't see anybody. He was like, no, he's like, he just like materialized. So he's just like, oh. and just formed. Oh. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, oh, come on. And I was like, you, I was like, you gotta be joking. Right. And, uh, I was like, what did he look like? So he starts describing me what this guy looks like. And, and, and it's not adding up at the time. Right. So I'm still trying to scrub scrolls through here. So, uh, he's sitting there telling me and I'm like, no, nah, that doesn't sound anybody. So, you know, who knows? Right. Cause I mean, I worked at a, an old part of the town out, out in the County. So, and he was like, man, he's like, he's like Grizzly. I'm telling you it actually happened. He said, I promise you. And this guy is, is, is honest. A man, he's never told me uh, anything wrong. He's always been square with me. And everything is, you know, his reports has always been right. I mean, everything he says, you can always take to the bank. And he's just a good all-around guy. And uh, so the more and more I thought about it, you know, it, it just didn't add up. So I, I let it go. And I went on. We worked our shifts. And later on that night, I was sitting there. And I got home. And I was like, well, that's weird. And I was like, that sounds familiar now. And I was like. Uh -huh. So I start going through my photographs and uh, I was like, well, maybe. And I was like, no, I'm not going to text this picture. I'm like, so I waited. Uh, I was off the next couple of days. So I drove down to the station and uh, and he, he was he was working. He was like, what are you doing down here? I was like, I want to show you a photograph. And I was like, he said, sure. He said, who's this photograph of? And I was like. I just want to show you this photograph, but I just want to see what's going to happen. And, uh, and I was like, tell me, does this resonate with you? And I clicked this photograph and I showed him and I held it up and I held it back and his face turned white. He was like, who is that? And I was like, that's my grandfather. He goes, that was the guy. Yeah. And, uh, he was like, he, and he, he, he just like, couldn't believe it. And uh, so I was talking to Kelly and Kelly's, you know, and I had other people with the Billy said that he's always been watching me, uh, especially when I was on the police department and so forth. And uh, I can't find a picture of the picture I showed him, unfortunately, uh, but it was interesting. Uh, so uh, and he watched with me, watched over me for many years on the force, and I guess uh since he was a police officer too right for the city of louisville and he retired and so was his brother he was a police officer and so was my brother mm -hmm. so i guess he was just watching out for me and, and and there were some times tracy that i couldn't tell you why things did not happen the way it should have happened or why i did not get yeah. hurt when i should have got hurt does that make sense
Yes, it definitely does. So, uh, you know, it's just very interesting. And uh, so I was talking to Kelly during one of her interviews. And uh, Kelly Joe is one of one of the very uh, well-known psychics. And it was funny because the first interview, I thought she was crazy. And uh, she was telling me that, uh, you know, that uh, you're going to, she said something about uh, tap. And uh, I'm like, no, I don't tap dance. She said, no, <laughs> listen to me. And I was like, no, I said, like, taps, I don't tap dance. Yeah. She said, stop it. She's like, you used to down at the lake, you used to play taps down on the porch, and it used to echo around the lake. And I was just like, oh. she's like on your trumpet. And I was like, oh, my God. I'm like, nobody knew that. She said, you did it at 6 o'clock every night that you were down there, and your grandfather loved it, and he misses that. Oh, and that, care. like. And that like flipped the switch, and then that like caught my attention. I'm like, okay, now this now this lady is like spot on right now. Like mm -hmm. nobody in my life, nobody knows yep. I used to play the trumpet. Nobody knew that I did this down uh, down the lake or anything like that. So I'm listening. And this is the one that told me about the pictures and all this other stuff. And she was like, "You got problems with your commode flushing," and I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, I do." And I was like, we had brand new commodes put in in our facilities. And I said, what's weird is like, you know, uh, my family were like, oh, here it is. I got the picture. So right. uh, that, oh, that's what go. he looks like, ladies and gentlemen. That's my grandfather when he joined the Marines. He retired. He was in the Marines. Then he went to the Air Force, retired as a lieutenant colonel, lieutenant right. major colonel or something. But that's that's who my officer saw. Oh, that's awesome. So, that's a, yeah, that, that that's pretty cool. So, yeah, so that <laughs> that was the picture I showed showed that officer. So uh, because when he kept describing his face, I was like, you know, it, it, but anyways. Uh, so Kelly was like, yeah, that's him getting your attention because, you know, in the, the commode, it was a push button, not a lever. It was, I mean, you literally, Tracy, had to push the button to make yeah. this thing flush. <laughs> so, and Kelly Joe went on to tell me, hey, you're going to move in approximately four to six months, and this is where you're going to move to. And I laughed at her. I'm like, I ain't moving. You know, I'm, I'm here in Lexington. I'm not going anywhere. Hello, Lala. Welcome. And uh, she's like, oh, and then at the end of the show, she was like, by the way, at the end of the show, she's like, you're going to have to go see a dentist. Bye. And uh, she got off the show. And I'm, I'm there by, on, on the live by myself. And I was like, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I got good teeth. And I went, I'm like, I don't have to go see a dentist. So what was really amazing is that uh, come to fruit and what I tell a lot of people when you deal with people with abilities, a lot of things may not resonate with you right away. Right. Mm. And uh, it, it may come to pass. So, ladies and gentlemen, I actually moved exactly when she said I was going to move. And it was funny. I moved where she said I was going to move. And uh, when I got there, it was not even a month and a half. I was sucking on a piece of Red Hot, uh, one of those Red Hot candies mm -hmm. about the size of a quarter. Yep. And I noticed that uh, a piece of it wouldn't dissolve and it had no flavor. I kept doing, how do you do that right? Yep. And it wouldn't go nowhere. So I spit it out. And uh, I was like, nah. And, <laughs> and if you watch the other shows, it was a, it was I didn't know I was a king. It was it was my crown. I broke a crown. Mm -hmm. So uh, I picked up the phone and I called Kelly. And Kelly goes, I know why you're calling. You gotta go see the dentist, don't you? And I was like, damn it! I hate when y'all do that to me. <laughs> I was like, really? I was like, that that just kills me, right? Yep. So. Uh, but it's interesting because people with abilities will tell me on the show all the time, you got a man, an older guy standing behind you, and it's your grandfather. I'm like, yeah, he's with me all the time. So it's very interesting. Uh, so it's nice to know that he's there, and it's very interesting to know about that stuff. But, you know, when it comes to paranormal activity, it's amazing that 
when you don't realize when things happen to you, right? You mm-hmm. ignore them. Yep. And I notice that dealing with people with abilities, they, they tell you is that when you ignore them, they get stronger and they try to get your attention, whether it's by knocking stuff around, moving stuff, uh, dreams. Uh, people come to you in your dreams, right? Uh, now, my grandmother, I knew when she comes around, uh, uh, when I was quite younger, it was Red Door. Uh, her fragrance that that uh, that she wore all the time was her favorite was Red Door. And uh, I found out uh, not too long ago, my mom, you know, has abilities. And one of her abilities was that she knows when somebody is going to pass, she would vision a casket and see a body, but not see the face. And she would also yep. smell funeral flowers, funeral flowers. And, uh, and that haunted her for years and years and years because she hated that. And she would always tell my dad, somebody's going to pass away shortly. And my dad's like, oh, you're crazy, what not, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and when my grandfather's brother got murdered uh, up in Ohio uh, when I was a child, uh, he came back. And that's what I'm saying. Everybody in my mom's family has come back. And it's weird. And, huh. you know, these people with the Billies, like La La, uh, the psychic detective, and everybody else, Kelly Joe, and people from Australia, they'll tell you, you know, when you ignore these signs and symptoms, right? Uh, they come back and try to get your attention in other ways. And for the non-believers out there that say that, you know, I have dreams about my loved ones, that's that's probably them trying to tell you that, hey, I'm with you. You know, I'm here yeah. and I'm, 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 you know, acknowledging you. And a lot of people are all, oh, it's baloney. You know, I'm just dreaming about my loved ones or I miss somebody. Or have you ever sat there and get a warm feeling, right? Because I'll be doing a show and uh, somebody be like, uh, Grizzly, uh, your grandfather's standing right over your shoulder and he's got his hand on you. Now, well, that explains why I got that warm feeling on my shoulder or I got that tingling sensation, right? You know, yep. I don't know, you know, why I get those sensations, you know, unless somebody tells me, you know, because I don't see stuff like that. I see, I see images, right? Like, uh, right now, uh, I know that you're thinking a lot about the song and you going to Nashville and you're trying to work out the details as I'm talking and, and I I see all that. Right. And this is what I'm getting from you just sitting here talking and that's very distracting. And I know you're excited about it and I'm excited too, but you know, it's just, that's how things come to me and it's weird. And I get that from people in the audience. But uh, for the non-believers out there, you got to open it up, you know, and it's very, very interesting to get people like Lala, right, uh, since she's here. We'll use her as an example and get people that come on her show and they connect. And uh, like on the last show, uh, we had Barb Hartman. Uh, did you watch the whole show or just part of the show? I, I I watched a little bit of it because I, I didn't so get So what was interesting, uh, I had one of the cat balls up here, and then I had the REM pod set in front of the computer. Oh, you're talking and, about the one uh, right before this, right? Right, right. With, and, yeah. Oh, yeah, I watched, I watched about 10 minutes of it. I, I, so I Barb's mother came through and uh, on the spirit, spirit no box kidding. and uh, Angus, and, uh, we, and nobody knew what that was, and everybody got real quiet. And uh, so we were like, oh, what? so we're, we're, I'm thinking Angus like a bull, you know, like a cow, moo moo, you know, and nobody said anything. And next thing you know, uh, I don't know, 30, 40 seconds later, Barb's like, maybe that's my mom. And the cat ball just lights up like, I'm like, oh my God, you know, I freak out, you know, I get real nervous and excited and I get stuttering and whatnot. And then, you know, we're like, is it Barb, Mom? And the REM pie goes, yeah. And we're like, what? And then, you know, people start asking questions and and we're starting to get reactions. And we're like, and me, I'm all excited. I'm sounding like, but I bore you to be there, you know? And uh, Barb is actually asking questions. Agnes, thank you. And that, that was the name, Agnes. Is that my, 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 am I saying that right, Tracy? Yeah, it looks like Agnes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Agnes. 
But, uh, but you know, and Barb's asking questions. Then we had the psyche detective in here, which is Melinda Williams. And if you never, ever seen her, I, I got to bring her back. Uh, she teaches psychic detective skills for people to do remote viewing, missing person cases, and how to hone on your psychic abilities. And she's very, very well known. Well, she came on into the chat. And so she start validating stuff for Barb and the cat balls like going dee -dee 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 -dee. and the rim pods going -dee 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 -dee. and I'm like, just like, oh, my God, I'm gonna it. and Barb's like asking questions and it's going off. And, and you know, the detective, the psychic detectives asking, telling Barb stuff. And she's like, oh, my God, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm having an FDL paranormal and, I, and I'm just freaking out, you know, and it's just all going on in, in, in the circle. And it's like nonstop. And it was just like Barbara asked a question and, and would react. FDL would ask a question and would react. And it was yep. just like, ladies and gentlemen, how can you fabricate this? I mean, you're watching it happening. I mean, my hands are right here and the ball's going off. The rim pot's going off, you know? And uh, and, and it's then Lala come in and start saying something about the throat and the stomach. And Barb's like, yeah, you know, she had problems with that, that too. <laughs> and then you had two psychics, you know, validating stuff. And it, and Barb is validating stuff. Then Barb is asking questions. Then I would repeat the questions. And I wouldn't even finish the questions. And the rim pot would go off. Then I would freak out. Then then Barb starts shaking. And I'd start shaking. And we all start shaking. And we, I was freaking out, you know. And yeah. it's just like it was nonstop. And it, it's weird. And then it all just cut off. And it went quiet. And it was just like that was it. Yep, And it's like, you know, and we, we talked about is how energy comes in spurts, I guess. I don't know. And like, evidently, the message it that Barb had, uh, if, if it's okay for me to say this, Barb, is that she, I guess, had regrets for how things happened when Barb was growing up, evidently. And that was part of the message that she wanted to relay on the show, that came across through the people with abilities and through the gadgets we were using to validate that with Barb. And that was heartfelt. Right. And, uh, and that was like, Oh my God. I mean, that was like a moment for everybody in, in on the show and in the chat, you know, and we all got kind of like real quiet because everything went dead. And it was just like, you know, and we're like, are you still here, Agnes? And, and nothing went off. And it was like, it was gone. And uh, so we we moved on to the next topic and uh, about going to the graveyard and stuff. And they were like, you know, you need to take uh, some dolls. And FDL was like, you need to take five dolls and do a pentagram. And I was like, oh, no, no, I ain't doing that. And the ball went off. And I'm like, oh, no, no. And I'll see you. And I, you know, Angel Light's like, oh, don't do that, Grizzly. It's bad for you. And everybody's like, yeah, thumbs up. You know, take dolls, take dolls and all this other stuff. And I'm like, I don't know about the doll thing, right? But yep. it was interesting. Because how can you explain somebody in the chat room, right, like Barb, and somebody coming through on the Spirit Talker in UK with the name and connecting across the world and across the country with devices and uniting like that and having, yeah, and Jean had to leave because we kept talking about a certain topic. So she missed a lot of it. And I'm sorry, Gene. I, I know how it is about certain topics. Uh, just, I have issues with certain topics that I have to deal with because of the department issues. But, uh, uh, but yeah, I, you're right. And, uh, but how can you explain that? You know, you can't, you, you can't, that, that's just a, you know, a, what I, when I tuned in, you were talking about the graveyard, you just started talking about it and, and then the uh, the cat balls will go off, and you're like, yeah. <laughs> the rim pods will go off. And you're like, <laughs> I actually, I hurt my neck. I hurt my neck doing that. Because, yeah, I, I, mean, it, really, I, it, it freaks me out. That's yeah, why I'm I don't not, have them up right now, right? Uh, I was driving I, driving to the doctor at that time, and I was I was just <laughs> laughing. I was like, holy crap, you know. <laughs> Well, then they got a meme of me floating around on Facebook as some of the faces I make, and I can't help it, you know, because I get real excited, and I don't mean yeah. to, but it's just like, you know, what makes those things go off? And when you ask a specific question, yep. and, it, and it responds, 
And then when you have people with abilities that will say, this is what it, what it's saying. This is what your loved one's telling you. Uh, yep. Brian, this was the one with the FDL Paranormal, the show prior to this uh, at 4 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, the Grizzly on the Hunt with FDL Paranormal, uh, Haunted Items, and so forth. Yeah, one at four. Uh, it was a good show. It it, yeah. it, it, it really involved uh, Barb Hartman uh, with her mom. It was very interesting. Uh, Lala played a, a part in it, too, with uh, the psychic detective. Uh, of course, you know, I always get excited about any time things go off. So, uh, but no. I it tell you, the, the, the best evidence I ever got was, uh, and I, you talked about how everything was going, going, and going, and then it just stopped. So we were up at Ashmore States, and and I've, I've talked a little bit about. It, never really dove in too far with it, but we had the uh, the tricycle up there on the third floor. It's in a level spot for an hour. We have uh, the REM pod up there sitting on the seat. It's going off. We have uh, the uh, uh, EMF up there. We have all this equipment, and it's going crazy for like 15, 20 minutes. And we're asking it to move this tricycle, nothing at all, nothing at all. And then everything stopped for like 10 minutes. And we thought, well, you know, this room, you know, they're silent now. Let's go to a different room. They just decided to stop talking. I'm telling you everything, everything spitting out words, all this and that. And we, uh, my my best friend, Tom, with, the, with that paranormal, his daughter, who was like 15 or 16 at the time, she was, uh, we're doing a Facebook Live. So she's videoing like this with the camera facing it. But we all decide to go into a different room and she goes like this with the camera, just pointing down at it, not realizing she's pointing down at it. And as we walk out of the room, we're, we're editing it the next day as we're walking out of the room, that tricycle's moving backwards. So we have it on film. Oh, but wow. I only bring that up because you said, you know, how everything was just going crazy for you. And then all of a sudden it just stopped. And then you're like, right. you're almost deflated. You know, you're like, dang it, man. We almost got something. You know, we, you know, we had we had evidence. But you're like, man, we wish that thing would have moved. And then, of course, the next days when when we saw that. So and and then uh, you're talking about the psychics and stuff. And it, it's a great gift for them. But, man, to me, it, I, it, and uh, I can't speak for them themselves because I don't have that, you know, that spirituality. But I would bet stress would be something that would that could hurt that could overwhelm you sometimes like that get there we had that person on uh the show one time that's talking about the death date she knew everybody's death date right man i i don't know if i could handle having that knowledge and then you know have to keep it to myself you know because you'd want to say something if you knew it was like tomorrow you know you'd be like wanting to tell that person hey go tell the people that you know that you love them stuff like that so you know i i respect that group of people that 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 do that job because it's it's i mean to them maybe they they like it you know to an extent but but it's got to be a little bit of stress too and, and that's a great topic for like lala or, or anybody like that to maybe hit on on one of their shows one of these times that'd be interesting to watch uh them, them talk about that so yeah it is and i learned when and this is going to be in in my book that's coming out uh it, it it's weird because a lot of people with abilities growing up you know, lived a very different childhood. Uh, they weren't normal, uh, as normal can be defined. They were outsiders. Uh, a lot of them had depressions. Uh, they were mistreated with other kids, bullied or whatnot, however you want to describe it, because yeah. they thought what they had was normal to everybody else, right? And uh, especially with the women, uh, it was hard for them to have relationships because they knew things about the other person that they shouldn't have known, right? Especially about being truthful and about things that they, a regular person would not know. Yeah. So that really hurt a lot of relationships. And then when they didn't go with their intuition and their gifts and went against them, they're like, I'm going to still go out with this guy and then try it it always ended up in a bad predicament or a bad outcome. And, and they had regrets of, over that. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. So, and, and, and that was one of the things that I saw when I did the journey. And when I started out the journey to do that, I didn't know I was going to write a book. And I told, I was told by Kelly Joe, I was going to, and I laughed at her. 
<laughs> and I said, Kelly Joe, I'm never going to write a book. She said, yes, you are. And I'm not going to tell you, but you're going to write a book. And I was like, well, what is it going to be? She said, you're going to figure that one out on your own. She said, I, I, I can't give you answers for everything. Some yeah. of it you're going to have to unlock yourself. I never, I'll never forget that conversation she gave to me. And because um, I went on that journey with people with abilities to understand and to actually to debunk them, right? To call, call out yeah. the fakes and phonies. But instead, I found everybody that I interviewed were all genuine and true. And the ones that I met were not fake and phony because the fakes and phonies knew who I was and knew my background and knew my history. And they're like, I'm not going against this ex-cop that did, you know, a couple of thousand interviews and won all these court cases in the court of law yeah. and uh, being interviewed by him. No. And I, I guess, you know, the interviews never worked out or just whatever. So it, it so I, all the ones I interviewed were spot on, and it was interesting for me, not for the people I interviewed, because it was sad, because everybody lived the same path or had the same path throughout life, in the same journey, but a different road with thorns and gravel, you know, shoes walking on or no shoes walking on gravel. That's all. That's all. Yeah. hard the path was for him growing up and not only growing up but being an outsider and uh it was it was heartfelt and so and i was like probably four or five months into it you know i met this one lady and i was talking to her and i was like you know i was telling her about this journey i was on and she was like you know you need to write a book and i'm like i don't know where to start writing a book she goes you know i'm a publisher and I'm like, what? And she goes, yeah. And I'm like, I'll help you. And I'm like, nah. I'm like, really? She's like, yeah. So she's like, you know, what do you want to do? And uh, is that how Grizzly, you say your name? Isn't that Grizzly you used to say Kath, your name? Catherine is what she she posted up there. Catherine, if you scroll up, I think. What, I've been calling her wrong, Catherine? Tammy Johnson said, hey, Kath." Irene. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. But anyways, so uh, we end up, uh, she's actually, it uh, should be out, I think, in November, I think, is our, our published date for the book. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, so, so it's very interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, you know, it was, uh, you know, I, I never thought that I would actually do it, right? Uh, so I was very, you know, and, and, and I called Kelly Joe up and I was like, Kelly, you ain't gonna believe it. She's like, I already know. She's like, uh, you, you, you already started on the book. And I'm like, how do you know all this stuff? So I went back to all the psychics. They interviewed. I'm like, hey, I'm like, can I put you in this book? But instead of me writing about what I did with you, I want you all to put some of your stuff in this book. And they're like, yeah, that'd be great. So everybody had a chance to put their own little spin and their input on the on their book. And and I gave everybody sort of like their own chapter in this book as well to tell oh, their cool. story. So, uh, yeah, it, it's pretty interesting. So I, I'm really, really uh, excited about it. So, yeah, I can't uh, wait till it comes out. Yeah, I am. But uh, but that that's my little journey with that. But uh, so what's been going on with you? So you're going to Nashville to do what? <laughs> so uh, when did we start this thing, Grizz? About six months ago? I have no idea. Yeah, I'd say it's around March, I think it was. Uh, so I had we Grizz gave me a challenge of some type of paranormal song because I was going to Nashville to sing. Uh, that's uh, right. Country music. I sing country music. If you guys get a chance, go to TracyEdmondMusic.com. You can hear the songs there or Spotify. Uh, I actually got a song that's getting played, a little bit of play on the radio you know, on Small Market for Cold I'm Drunk Again. And uh, I actually got a guy, Grizzly, uh, from uh, the area here in St. Louis that's going to play it on a on an AM station tomorrow. So at least I know I can hear it on the radio somewhere, right, ahead of time. Otherwise, you got to try to catch it. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, Grizzly challenged me to come up with a uh, a paranormal song, and I think I came up with a pretty damn good paranormal song. 
And if we're going, my wife Kelly and I are going down this weekend and I'm going to put the, the words to the music that we made. And it's going to, it's going to be exciting. I think for the paranormal, I think, I think, I think it's going to be good. You're going to love it, Chris. Oh, I can't wait. I can't yeah. wait. So I, I got a message. Uh, I'm real excited about the song. Uh, the name of the book. Oh, oh. Man, I thought that was a dog. <laughs> I thought that was a dog crawling on my foot. Oh, it was a cord. False alarm. False alarm. Oh, my God. I thought I was going to have a meltdown. You need five minutes to go take care of yourself? Oh, I really did. I thought that was a dog crawling up my leg. Uh, the, the name of the book is called Whispers of the Mind. Is the name of the book. Sorry, ladies. I, I ladies and gentlemen, I didn't mean to have a meltdown. I really did thought it was a doll crawling up my leg. That, I'm sorry. So, Wh Whispers of the Mind is, is the name of the book. Uh, well, I'm going to so, uh, buy a, a signed copy from you. Whew. I hope you know that, right? Man, my heart about came out of my chest. <laughs> <laughs> it's the crazy witches laughing. They I about, ju I about jumped out of my chair. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, uh, anyways, funny. yeah. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't mean to, mount, to have a meltdown on the air, ladies and gentlemen, but uh, that happened once on the show. So, <laughs> yeah, That's whispers funny. of the mind. Um, thanks for somebody asking me on, on sending me a message. Hey, Thomas, uh, welcome back to the show. Uh, yeah, no, no. Uh it, that's awesome. Like I said, I want to get a, a signed copy from you. When, uh, when you get it out, I'll buy one from you and, and sign it for me, if you would, please. Uh, yeah, so I'm actually working on another book. Uh, I've got it on hold because uh, I don't want to get too far. It's, it's a book on near-death experiences, NDE. Oh. And uh, because I, on this trip I took, I learned a lot about near-death experiences as well. And I think that's a fascinating topic. So, but anyway, yeah, it is. just want to throw it out out there. Yeah, who's your publisher? Uh, her name is, I'm glad you asked, Shay Brandom. Oh, She's good. very well known, and uh, she helps out a lot of people. Uh, she does Pagan Magazine and other ones. Uh, she's done mm -hmm. She's done quite a few books. Oh, good. So, uh, yeah, so I'm very happy with her. So everything's oh, okay. going pretty good. I love the cover so far, so yes. I wish we were closer, man. I'd come down and... Uh... And uh, come do that cemetery hunt with you. Just too dang yeah, far so, away. <laughs> so it's going to be interesting. So I got another message too. So I'll, I'll share my screen real quick. Uh, so yeah, uh, if, if you do, uh, I do have, uh, I'll share it real quick and I'll go through it. Uh, if you do, ladies and gentlemen, I do have the holy water. Yes, it's only eight ninety five. Can you see it tracing? Because I can't see anything. Uh, no, yep, there it is. All right, so I do have the holy water. It's only eight ninety five. Just make sure if you do send me a message. Do not drink it, consume it, put in anybody's food, drinks, or anything like that, because it does have a little chlorine in it because of the pandemic. So uh, the crucifixes you can buy with or without the holy water. It's got the Saint Benedict's medal in it, and they are blessed. So uh, thanks for reminding me, and I put that up there. So, but like I said, if y'all want any of that stuff, just send me a private message or email me or something like that. And let me know and I'll ship that out. So it's not a problem. Thanks for the reminder, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate it. No, so, no, that's good. Yeah. Uh, I was going to ask everybody, if you guys get an opportunity, uh, you know, you can see my hat, paralink.com. I'm not going to share the screen or anything like that, but if you guys get an opportunity to check it out, it'd be appreciated. It's free. It's for the community. I just want to throw it out there for a couple seconds here. You know, it's it's almost like a Facebook for the community. It's a, uh, you know, it's a uh, social media page for people to talk. We have a lot of members and we are global. But what we're looking for is more, obviously, more people to join. But it's going to stay free. But we need more content, people posting stuff. So if you guys have the opportunity, it would be appreciated if you could just at least check it out. It does, ain't going to hurt anything. It's free. We don't ask personal information. Just give an email and a password, and, and it's all good. So please, if you have the opportunity. And as Forrest Gump says, that's all i got to say about that. <laughs> yeah, the crucifix is a real nice D. Uh, people love them. Uh, they are blessed and everything. 
but uh, I actually uh, I have somebody that's lined up. Uh, how far are we booked out? October 11th is the last one. After that, we can whoever you want. Because uh, I actually have uh, somebody that is uh, 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 a viewer that has uh, a lot of paranormal um, experiences that I've been talking to mm -hmm. that uh, would like to come on the show. Uh, but uh, the thing is, uh, it's going to be anonymously, and we have to hide the person's face uh, gotcha. for privacy reasons. Uh, a lot of paranormal stuff. Uh, very impressive. Uh, sad in a way, uh, you know, but for people like us, you know, we get excited. But uh, a lot of things this person's went through, trial and tribulations over it. Uh, I'm sharing right now, ladies and gentlemen, my affiliate links uh, to some of the people that support us. So that's what I'm sharing in the comments right now. But uh, yeah, Science Bob, thank you. Uh, he actually ordered the uh warfare spiritual warfare kit oh, and cool. uh i don't know if i got a picture of that uh let me see if i do real quick yeah yeah and i'll pull that up while i'm while i'm talking um uh, let me see here a click button i'm sorry but oh, uh some of the some of the experiences that this person has talked about uh is mind-blowing and it actually sounds like out of a horror movie and I say that with with that with, you know, really with actually respect, yeah. uh, you know, my heart actually goes out to the person because of the things that this person's gone through. Yeah. Uh, but that's what the warfare kit looks like. So it comes with holy water, a candle. Uh, each one of these crosses, uh, we have to do something with. Uh, we have to plant them. Uh, it, there's a whole bunch of. Uh, things we have to do. It's it, it, it's a process. It's it's just nothing you just buy and just sit on a shelf. Uh, this is for cleansing of their property, the land, the house, everything. Uh, and like I said, oh, that's it, cool. It, it, yeah, it, 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 it's a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, but it it really makes you wonder um, how this person survived. Yeah. Uh, through all this. And, and I don't want to give too much away. Uh, so what date do you say you have available? I tell you what, yeah, the 18th or the 25th. The 25th might be pretty cool since it's closer to Halloween, you know. Okay. So I'll and, reach out to the person on uh, for the 25th and, and see if or the 18th this will work down. Yeah, 25th, yeah. 18th or the 25th and go ahead and get yeah. that book. Uh, and, and I'll reassure uh, them. I don't know. I mean, you I just want to make sure it's okay to yeah. have permission, right? Yep. And because they're on the teeter totter right now and with respect with their experiences yeah. because they 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 own a business and yeah. and you know how it is and they and yeah. it, it, it took them a lot to come forward and say, Hey, look, this is what I've been through and and uh, I actually um, threw the line out and was like, hey, um, if you want, you know, have the opportunity, uh, you know, I can talk to Tracy, maybe uh, have you come on the show and and give your testimony about some of your experiences. And and uh, the person was actually shocked at first. And yeah. ladies and gentlemen, if if you've got encounters and stuff that you want to talk about uh and discuss uh you know maybe in october uh or november maybe tracy yeah. and i can come up with a date and have an open forum date to where we can just have random viewers come on and and give a you know like a five or ten minute you know hey this is my story you know or a 15 minute section for or we, could, or we could do like do like every the third wednesday of the month you have have a person on that you know out of the audience or, or you know that wants to give their their story or two people you know what i mean i like you yeah. i like either of those, i like either of those ideas chris uh we could do a 10 or 15 minute thing or if they have a lot do a do a whole show you know that 
That's up, so, up to up you guys. Now, it's awesome that that person, you know, that you reach out to that person and and they're interested. Hopefully, they'll uh, they'll, they'll take it and and want to want to share their experiences and be very. Yeah. You know, we'd be very respectful to her to them. Yeah. Her, you know, so you know, we want a, a safe platform, right? And we we yeah. have that in our groups, but we want a safe area too. Uh, you know, because when, when I took that spiritual journey with the psychics, you know, uh, I don't mean to sound graphic, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to pull my mic a little closer so you can hear me. Uh, I don't know how many people actually took their own lives because of their, their abilities, because that's how far lost they were, uh, in, in the crowd, uh, because how different they are between us and everybody else because they didn't understand their abilities and why they could see things or hear things or or go through the things that other people could not so you know that that really changed me and and that's why i took those classes last year and got my certifications become a reverend and ordained minister and so forth and took the biblical reference route and uh so and and i actually i learned a lot uh, and I'll never forget that. And everybody that I uh, interviewed and still meet along the way, even with the crime shows that do the, the, the psychic panel, you know, still touches me to this day. Yeah. So, you know, and say la la. Yeah, I felt that way at one point in my life. And, and it's sad. So if, if you do have a paranormal experience in their encounter and, you know, reach out to us. Uh, yeah, you know, Grizzly cool. Chris on Facebook, reach out to Tracy and, uh, Tracy, yeah. you know, we'll try to figure it out and get you scheduled in somehow and we'll make time. Yeah. Are we booked? Yeah, absolutely. We are. But, you know, we'll we'll make time and uh, figure something out, get you on the air and, and without, get without you guys, without you guys, we wouldn't even have a show. Right. So and that's it right. Is, it is appreciated. That's right. So, well, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of night. Don't forget, we got another show coming up at 9 p.m. Eastern time. That's right. Yes, uh, cryptids and Bigfoots and local news. And, man, well, I don't know what's going to happen on that show. But, Tracy, <laughs> I can't wait for the song. So, when am I going to hear yeah. it? Uh, hopefully, we have it by next Wednesday. But All I'm not. Right. You know, it's kind of quick. It just, just depends how it goes Saturday. So. And how much they, how fast they can get it all together. So awesome, great, great. Well, ladies and gentlemen, from coast to coast and around the world, that's a wrap. We'll catch you in the next show. Good Thanks, night. guys. Godspeed. Bye, bye.